Okay, now we're ready to install Vector on your bike. Before we do so, I want to spend a couple minutes talking about the pedal pod and washers and the potential need for washers. If you recall from an earlier segment, we talked about your Vector including a set of washers. These washers are needed uh, to ensure that you've got a proper fit of the pedal pod to the crank. There's a mounting surface on the inside of the pedal pod. It slightly protrudes. That's the surface that needs to bear the load as you tighten down your pedal against your crank. Some cranks, for example, this Campy Record, has a slightly protruding or even flat flush surface. In this case, it wouldn't need a washer. Shimano Durace, for example, though, has a slightly recessed area. If that recessed area is a half millimeter or larger, you'll need to use one or more washers to take up that gap. For example, holding the pedal pod up against the Campy, I can see that I've got a nice gap there as I hold it flush to the crank between the pedal pod and the crank. And I know that that load is going to be on that mounting surface. However, on the Durace, if I hold that up and just press it against, I have no gap, which suggests that this outer part of the pedal pod is going to be bearing the load if I tighten that down. And that could cause damage to your pedal pods. So in order to take up that gap, we recommend starting with one washer to see if that's sufficient. If not, then you may need to go to two. The order is start with your pedal, then your pedal pod, and a washer. And the washer goes on the inside of the pedal pod, not on the outside. If it goes on the outside, if you put it on the outside, you could damage your pedal pod. And then we tighten the, the pedal down on the crank. And I'll do this off the bike just to show you an example of what a successful surface looks like in terms of gap. And now we tighten that down, and now we see a nice gap, slight gap between the pedal pod and the Shimano crank, and that suggests that we've got a good fit. Now let's go to the bike. For first time installation of Vector, we recommend starting on the left side of the bike. You're free of the drivetrain, so it makes the installation more simple. Two pedals and two pedal pods in your Vector box. The pedal pods are not handed, so they can go on either side of the bike, left or right, either one. What we recommend before you start is grease the spindles on your pedal, put a little grease on the pedal pod where it interfaces with the spindle, and also on the threads on your crank. This ensures a nice, clean, mechanical connection between all the parts. So we remove the warning sticker that's on the inside. This is indicating that you need to ensure that if you add washers, you're putting them on the inside of the pedal pod. On this particular setup, we have a rotor crank set. It's got a fairly deep recess around that pedal spindle hole. We know that from uh, predetermining this, that it needs two washers. So we're gonna go ahead and take our pedal, our pedal pod, and our washers, two washers, on this particular setup. And we're gonna move and hand tighten that onto the left crank. The orientation of the pedal pod, um, it can go anywhere on the crank. It does not affect the power or the cadence calculations of Vector. However, in our testing, what we found is that orienting on the leading edge of the crank is a good place to be. So when the crank is in the three o'clock forward position, the pedal pod is pointing downward. And in this case, it's out of the way when you're clicking in, clipping out of the pedal. Um, and it makes no contact and doesn't come close to contact when you're cornering. Once you've got it hand tightened, move to the back of the, of the crank and snap your connector in place and you'll feel a, an engagement there, a snapping as it snaps into the inner side of the spindle. So the left side's hand tightens. Let's move to the right. So like the left, pedal, pedal pod, remove our sticker, and then our two washers on the inside of the pedal pod. And once again, hand tighten down. And then we get ready for the additional review on this side, which is the clearance once the pedal pod is in place. If you recall, one of the first things we checked was to ensure that we had good clearance between the crank and the chain. So I've got it hand tightened. Snap the connector in place. And now I move the crank once again back with the, the chain and the large chain ring in the front and the small cog in the back. And I move the crank next to the chain to ensure that I've got a good clearance 
between the head of the connector and the chain. In this case, I've got two to three millimeters of clearance, so I'm fine. One additional tip, if you find that you've got a very thin crank, you're on the 15 millimeter or so, that that connector head may protrude a little bit and come close to that chain. You could add another washer on this side and actually bring in that connector head. It's another way to achieve additional clearance. Once we've hand tightened both of these, you're now ready to use a pedal wrench. 15 millimeter pedal wrench is used. Garmin recommends 25 foot pounds of torque um, or 34 newton meters. And hand tighten those, achieve a nice firm tightening of the pedal, uh, but not over tighten. Pedals don't need to be over tightened. And if you'd like to use a torque wrench to achieve that exact 25 foot pounds or 34 newton meters, uh, by all means do so. And now that we've got it installed, vectors on the bike, we're ready to go to the next step and pair it up to a Garmin device. 